Andre, last time we saw you, obviously a, a very spectacular win. I know you're not, uh, you know, holding everything in the results, but uh, man, how big was that one for you to get a performance like that and a result like that? Uh, felt so good, man. Felt so good to go out there and get a, a win against a really tough guy. You know, I think um, I think the, the my last opponent was uh, underrated. You know, he's he's a really tough guy and a you know, big 45er and um, real dangerous guy. So to go out there and put him away early and and get to showcase my skills felt great. I think you had a post on social media that said like I'm not chasing that feeling anymore because I have like a more complete life, but. Yeah. That's a pretty high feeling, right? I mean, yeah. is, I mean, is yeah. it still a very great thing, even if you don't have to chase it? Is it still that spectacular? Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, I still uh, that I'm that's still the goal. Like getting getting win, winning fights is still the goal of the whole reason we do this is to win fights. What I'm not chasing is the external validation. I'm not chasing um, this some magical finish line that doesn't exist. I'm I'm in love with the process. I'm in love with the the discipline. I'm in love with with everything, I'm in. I'm in love with the process of of winning a fight, as opposed to just some made up finish line. Do you know when you got that realization? Because it's hard, right? Like you start out on, on the lower levels, you want to get in the UFC, you realize that's right. not the finish line. Oh, I won a title. You win a title, and you go, oh, that's not the finish line. You know what I mean? Like because you're right, it never stops. So when did it finally click for you that like, dude, it doesn't matter. Like you you have to enjoy the whole process. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly when. You know, it's it's. I wouldn't say there was like a big aha moment. It's been sort of stages, you know, and I'm sure I will be I'll be even better at it in a year, you know, as I'm better at it than I was a year ago. So I'm learning, I'm growing. Like we talk about we're basically right now the question is like, how did you get to the finish line of realizing there's not a finish line? So I didn't. Like I'm still growing and learning to grow and learn. So um and, and that's the that's the beauty of it. That's well said. Uh, all right, so that last fight was like eight weeks ago. Uh, how did you get involved in this fight? How, how did it pop up? Man, they just offered it to me, and, I, and I, I jumped on it. It was a big opportunity, and I took it, and I can't wait to capitalize on it. Was there any discussion at all, or was it just automatically like, yeah, sign me up? Yeah, I talked to Danny Castillo. I talked to my, my, my coaches who I trust, and, um, but ultimately I made the choice. You know, I, I, you got to go for it. You know, if, you're not, if you're not ready to beat the best guys in the world uh, – in a moment's notice, then what are you doing this for, really? Yeah. You know, you're, we're, we're, we're all trying to make these big opportunities happen, and sometimes you get eight weeks and sometimes you don't, so time to go. What, what do you think about this match of oral? Because it seems like, on paper, amazing fight, two yeah. amazing warriors, two respectful fun. dudes, right? You know what I mean? So, like, is there something, like, fun about the style and the, and the human? Yeah, I think I, I have the utmost respect for him, and, and – um, it wasn't a fight that I was hunting. I wasn't calling him out. They, they – they presented the fight, and I took it, you know. And it's time to get paid. And it's time to get a big win. It's time to get these big opportunities rolling and keep this momentum going. And I I'm, I'm incredibly excited. Uh, it's a great opponent. It's a great card. It's a great everything. It's great. And, and, and I'm excited to be a part of it. At this point, knowing that, like, there's not these false finish lines, right, and knowing how much stuff you have going outside of, you know, this that's, that you're happy about, like, what is success for you now? Is it still world champion means I'm a success? Or are you a success now considering where you are? Yeah, I don't know. I think, you know, it's, it's levels. I, I consider I, – I, I am getting better at celebrating the small victories and being happy with where I am. Obviously, I want more. I'm going to be the undisputed UFC featherweight champion in the world. Like, I am going to be a world champion. But I love where I'm at, and I love the people I'm with, and I'm excited to just be here right now. Nice. Last thing for me, I mean, uh, your journey, you know, you're, talking, you're talking about, like, coaching and enjoying that aspect of it now. Like, do you see yourself shifting to that anytime soon, or do you still feel like there's a whole bunch of fight left in you, or – what yeah, do you feel I got like your career has to go. I got a lot more fight in me. I'm I'm not even close to done. Uh, I'm I'm just getting started. So my my fight career is, you know, hopefully my fight career is is, you know, we might be halfway there. Like I'm I'm I feel I'm Jim Miller and and Glover Teixeira are fighting into their 40s. Like you guys might be stuck with me another decade. Like I'm 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 in here. But I do enjoy coaching the younger guys on the team. You know, there's some guys – I wouldn't say I'm a coach, but I do corner some of the guys. I help them where I can. If You know, I don't, I don't try to step on any toes. I don't walk around like I'm the coach or like I'm – you know, I'm, I'm still a teammate, you know. But if guys ask me for help, then I, then I offer them the help I can offer them. And sometimes I corner guys. I just uh, 
you know, I've cornered um, Billy Brand, who you'll see in the UFC real soon. I cornered Jack Duffy, who you'll see in the UFC real soon. And, um, a lot of young, fresh guys on, on Alpha Male that are killers, man. So I help them however I can, you know. Hey, Andre, um, I guess like, what about the fight excited you the most? Was it like a shot at the top 15? Was it a shot against Ige? Was it a, was it a co-main event? Like, was it just, or was it all that? Yeah, just another chance at all these fights – our chance at development, at, at growth, at at testing yourself, at challenging yourself, at overcoming those challenges, and that's what excited me. You know, also getting fucking paid excited me. So, uh, you know, running up two checks back to back, you know, at the beginning of the year, and and still having time to fight two, you know, two more times this year. That's that's really excited me. Um, great matchup, but. I'm just so focused on myself. It kind of doesn't matter who it is, you know. It doesn't matter if I'm – my last fight, I was one, I was basically the first fight on the card. Now I'm the co-main event. Who cares? Like, a fight's a fight, and I'm here to win a bunch of money, get a number next to my name, and most of all, just make myself and, and the people around me proud. What does a win over Danny Gay do for you? You know, a win Saturday puts me in the top 15. Or maybe not. I don't know. You guys make those rankings up as you go. I don't – who fucking knows. But a big a big win keeps my momentum going. You know, a big win brings me closer to the things that I want. And, and um, a big win uh, – a big win brings us into spring with a, with, a, with a high vibe, you know. It just keeps the ball rolling. This is what we do. Like, this is this – is, I love this job. Like, why the fuck not? You know, like it, it's. I, I've stopped being like, I does this, and I'm gonna have this after this win. It's like, dude, I'm, I get to go fight. The fight is the reward. Like, that's what the fight does. Like, going in and winning a fight Saturday night is my reward. That, like, winning a fight Saturday night means I just got to win another fight in the UFC. Like, that's that's enough. All the other shit is bonus points. It was your UFC debut in your in your last right. fight. So how are you gonna follow that up? This is my UFC debut on Saturday. Um, you got a Jesus tattoo, uh, yeah. new one. Yeah. Um, how you, I guess, how, how'd it turn out? Yeah, it turned out great. I, uh, I get tattooed at Captured Tattoo, uh, in Southern California. Um, Dan Smith, Chris Astrologo, 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 um, and Sean Topper, my good friend. And, uh, they're all my good friends. And, and, um, Tyler, the photographer also shout out to him. So all those guys in that shop are incredible human beings and incredible tattooer. And, uh, I get tattooed by all of them. And, um, yeah, the Jesus piece is, uh, I don't know. It's like a turning point in my life. I have, I have, I have gods from multiple religions tattooed on me. I love theology. I love history. I love sociology. I love learning about people and how, um, you know, I love learning about religions. I love learning about myths. I love learning about folklore. I love learning about the way societies grow and evolve. And a huge part of that is, um, narrative and storytelling. And, you know, the story of Jesus Christ is an incredible story. And, um, you know, I don't know exactly where I fall in the, you know, I don't, well, I don't know exactly where I fall religiously, but, you know, I pray, you know, I, I pray to Jesus and I, and I pray to some higher power and um, regardless of whether you're religious or Catholic or Christian or whatever, the story of Jesus is incredible. The story of sacrifice is incredible. The story of um, complete radical acceptance of your personal responsibility is, is one that we can all learn from. So, um, yeah, the Jesus piece came out sick, and it means a lot to me. And um, yeah, I, I could talk about tattoos all day, so don't get me started. Well, um, uh, one, one more tattoo. Yeah, yeah. Of all your tattoos, which one hurt the most? What hurt the most when my dad left? <laughs> no, um, no. What hurt the most? The one that hurt the most was um, probably the back of my uh, the back of my knee sucked bad. The knee ditch sucks. The foot sucked. The palm, the palm was not fun. Um, the worst probably is like midsection, like nipple to top rib. There's a, just that strip of like sternum is hellish. Um, but I'm the wrong guy to ask because I'm not great at getting tattooed. Like there's a reason I get tattooed by all my friends. And number one, they're the best, some of the best tattooers in the world. But number two, like they're my friends, so I can complain and fucking be annoying, and they'll still put up with me. So. Um, yeah, I would say there's a few spots. That none of them are fun, you know. None of them are none of them are fun, but they're worth it. I don't know if you saw this, but Max Holloway came out and said that um, of all the fires he's fought, you're the one who has hit him the hardest. Yeah. I guess what's that mean to you? It means I can fucking crack. 
because Max is the man. Max has got one of the best chins in history. He's, I mean, not just one of the best chins. He's Max is one of the best fighters in the history of the division and probably in the history of the sport. And uh, it was an honor to share the cage with him when we were babies. I go back, I look at that fight, we're like, we're babies, you know. And um, Yeah, it's not like Max and I aren't hanging out, you know. We're not like hanging out every day, but he's a person that I do consider a friend. And I, I – um, Essentially, whenever Max fights, I'm rooting for him. Like, I just really, really got a lot of love for the guy. I think he's a great person, great dad, great champion. Um, can't say enough good things about him. So to get a compliment from him like that was uh, was great. Who's winning the Super Bowl on Sunday? Niners, baby. I'm from Northern California, and I actually don't give a shit about football. But when the Niners win, all my friends are going to be, like, crying tears of joy, and I want that for my people. So, yeah, let's go Niners. Thanks, man, for taking the time. Let me yeah, just go you. back. Yes, sir. Uh, to what you're with John about the finish line. Talk about the starting line. You've been visibly upset to not be able to fight. Yeah. How good does it feel to drive back here, man? And you know, forget. So layoff. good, so good, man. I've sat in this desk talking to you guys multiple times, and that's the thing that's come up multiple times is like, do you, how active do you want to stay? And I'm con I'm begging the UFC like, get me back in off of off of a tough loss. I'm waiting six months to fight. Off of a big win, I'm waiting six months to fight. They called me with this. I'm like, thank you. Like, just just getting the call meant a lot because I need them to know that I'm a guy who's ready to go. I'm a guy who's ready to, to put it on the line and risk it and, and capitalize on these opportunities. So getting that call felt good. Being able to take the call felt good. Um, I'm disciplined, and I'm, I make this my lifestyle, you know. Um, I had to cut some snacks out because I was snacking pretty heavy. Like, I was training my ass off, but I was also snacking. So I had to put a pause on the snack food uh, and get and get back to my real strict diet. But other than that, man, I was, like, staying ready, you know. I took no damage in the fight. I sparred the week after my fight, you know, not going crazy. But I was moving with guys, and I was hitting mitts. And, yeah, I feel I feel good. I feel good, and I'm, I feel blessed, and I want to keep this going. Like, I, after this, I, I'm going to win my fight Saturday. Hopefully I'll be back here in another month. Like I, I don't. I want to fight five times this year if I can. Like I, I'll put everything, everything else, like vacation, holiday, whatever. Everything gets put to the side if I get offered a fight, and I'm willing to to fight as many times as possible this year. That's what's up, man. And you, you talked about it with Alex. Oh, you know, showing up, doing your thing, coming event spot. Um, you know, seizing the opportunity. And yeah, we've had some up and downs, bumps in the roads, but that kind of has to give you that pep in your step that the UFC recognizes game to put you in that co-main with what might, what might be the fight of the night? Yeah, um, I think the UFC has some faith in me, obviously, that to, that, that I'm going to deliver. You know, there's there's people who like watching me fight. There's people who who don't like me. There's people who think I'm their, the, the, their favorite fighter or I am their favorite fighter or there's people who can't stand me. People can feel however they want about me, but no one can ever say that I was in a boring fight and no one can ever say that I didn't ever pour my heart and soul into a fight. So I think that resonates with people and I think that the UFC, um, no, even, even though the company's gotten bigger, it's the fastest growing sport, I think something that's great about the UFC is they still really uh, on a deep level understand fighting, you know, and they understand what people want and man, I, I pour my heart into this shit, and uh, it'll always be that way. So I'm glad they recognize it, and uh, I'm glad the fans recognize it, and uh, I can't wait to do it again Saturday and get my hand raised. All right, I mean, I appreciate that. Good Thank you. All good? Yeah, sure.